All right, let's take our Bibles this evening and turn to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. We'll preach from that psalm this evening. Uh, just a little break from the book of Acts. We've been preaching verse by verse, line by line, chapter by chapter through the book of Acts, but I just felt like the Lord uh, impressed upon my heart to preach from Psalm 23 this evening, so uh, we'll do that. Psalm 23. And there's not going to be any new revelation. Of course, there never is. But I mean, I'm not going to have anything that's just going to be like, wow. But, you know, the truth is this. Um, we, we, this is a very familiar psalm, probably more familiar, maybe one of the most familiar passages of Scripture known to the world. And, um, but it's just good to hear it again. You know, we watch the same movie over and over and over. And because we like the movie, and every once in a while, maybe it's been a couple of years since we've seen it, but we watch it again and think, well, that was good. And it, so it is with some of these familiar texts. Well, yeah, we know them, but man, it's just good to, to look at them again and be uh, just, I, I just hope that we'll just draw closer uh, to the Lord this evening. Uh, one thing we've been doing in, in our house in the evening times, these, my boys have this book of uh, poetry. And so before we go to bed, I, I looked up and I found some poems that I liked. And I've been reading them every night. And one of them is uh, by Robert Louis Stevenson, and it is Autumn Fires. Autumn fires. And it goes like this. In the other gardens and all up the vale, from the autumn bonfires, see the smoke trail. Pleasant summer over, and all the summer flowers, the red fire blazes, the gray smoke towers. Sing a song of seasons, something bright in all, flowers in the summer, fires in the fall. That's nice, I think. That's nice. You know, fire. We're getting probably won't be many fires around here, but back home, you know, <laughs> on the country in the uh, cool of the time in the evening, and uh, after summer's over, you get back in school and bonfires and all that's nice. And I also read this one, Daffodils by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and, twinkie, and twinkle on the Milky Way, they'd stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. That's nice too, you know. But I like these poems, but when you come to this Hebrew poetry here in Psalm 23, it doesn't even compare. It doesn't even compare. <laughs> because autumn fires and daffodils were written by men, but Psalm 23 was written from the heart of God. This psalm is picturing the peaceful relationship one may have with God as a deep reservoir of comfort for many. By the way, the Bible, I heard this today, is not a textbook. The Bible is the living word of God. That's, man, we need to keep that with us. I know sometimes I get into studying it, and I study it so, sometimes. If I don't watch myself, I get into looking at it as a textbook. It's not a textbook, folks. <laughs> it's the living word of God uh, that will speak to our hearts. And that's what I want to speak to you tonight. Um, Psalm 23, the point is this, the Lord is my shepherd. That's what I want you to take home with you tonight. When you go home and you lay in bed tonight, just... I want you to think about, the Lord is my shepherd. Let's read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The story is told about this little boy who was sick. He was a Scottish boy. Scottish kid out in the highlands of Scotland and a, and a preacher and a, and a minister were called and said, would you please go visit that little boy? And so they, 
uh, you know, went together and crossed over the moors and climbed the hillside and finally made it out to that cottage and knocked on the door and the mother uh, opened and let them in and they could tell mother was, you know, she'd been working diligently and had long hours written all over her face. It was her only child and he was uh, really sick and so let him into the room and I went over to the little bed where the little fellow was laying and they said, Laddie, do you know the 23rd Psalm? And every little boy in Scotland knows the 23rd Psalm. And he said, yes, I can, I can, I can it. Can I know it? I know it. And they said, Laddie, can you recite it for me? And he began, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And told him, and he, he recited the whole thing. And the minister said, now listen, Laddie. Always remember that first verse, the first clause, five words for five fingers. The Lord is my shepherd. And he said, you always remember that. And so that's the cool, that's the, uh, that, that's the meaning of tonight's message. Look at, uh, just want to look at each one of these words. Probably we're not going to get much further than those first, that first verse. And that's okay, uh, because this is a psalm that's just, it's just loaded uh, with just spiritual health and hopefully be a comfort to you tonight. But look at that verse, uh, verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I like to just take each one of those first five words and look at them this evening. The. That lets me know right there there's only one. <laughs> there's only one. There's only one God in the world. Man tries to search for everything and they think they've found God, but let me tell you, God's word says there's only one. The. Not a or one of many, the, singular. There's one. There's only one God. And then look at it, the Lord. Now, in my Bible, probably in yours too, uh, all of those are capitalized. Is that right? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now, when you see that, that's different. And, you know, in the Bible, sometimes you'll see uh, Lord, capital L, O, like we see it here. Then you also see capital L, little o, little r, little d, and sometimes you'll see Lord, small l, small o, small r, small d, like the Lord of the Philistines. Then you might have Lord, capital L, capital o, little o, r, d. That means master. That's Adonai. That means my master. But when you come to capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that is the exclusive name of God. It's never used only to refer to him. Because in other, God or Lord, those have reference at some occasions to um, uh, men or to other things. But when you come to this, whenever you see it in the Bible, capital, all caps, that's the exclusive name of Jehovah. Uh, Jehovah means I am that I am. And we ought to study that sometime. Has anybody ever studied the names of God? All right, well, maybe we'll study that one. I mean, that you talk about strengthening your faith when you begin to understand who... Hey, huh? With, with Storman? Oh, two years? <laughs> well, um, but here's the question. Who named God? I mean, I named Titus, and I named Asa and Silas, and I came up with Phoebe. But who named God? Amory's thinking about that. I'll tell you who named God. God named God. <laughs> that sets the whole foundation. So he named himself, I am that I am. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but I digress. That's going to be another, we'll get into that some other time. But when you come to this, it's uh, the I am that I am, the exclusive name of God. Lord refers to Jehovah as the covenant-keeping God, the one who never fails to fulfill all his promises. When you see that, you know that's the God who never fails to fulfill all his promises. Amen. I can find comfort in that tonight. To know that my God named himself uh, with the idea that I'm a covenant-keeping God and I will never fail in keeping my promises to you, young man, to you, young lady, to you, young, younger guys. I mean, it doesn't matter. 
God is not a respecter of person. He promises through his own naming of himself, I will <laughs> keep my promises to you. That's comforting to me tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. I like Jeremiah 32, 27. It says, God said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> Amen. I mean, that's God giving the testimony about himself. This ain't us coming up with stuff. This is Jehovah saying, Behold, that means, looky here. I am the Lord. The God of all flesh. And then he asks, is there anything too hard for me? And it's anything. It's not anything. It's anything. It's two words. Look it up. I mean, you, we're talking about minute. Is there anything? I don't know what you're going through tonight, but is there anything too hard for God? No way. And we are called that in Psalm 23, the Lord. There's only one, and his name is I am that I am. The Lord is. I like that it doesn't say was. <laughs> it doesn't say the Lord was my shepherd. Yeah, a long time ago, he was God, but he said the Lord is. That's present tense. That means right now. And we can say that same thing tonight. It's not that God used to be God, but well now with the way the world is and with 2017 and now I guess God's off his throne. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Lord is. Is. Right now. Present tense. A present reality. David is the one who wrote this and nobody knows necessarily when he wrote this. Maybe it was later on in life, or maybe it was when he was a young man out as a shepherd himself. And when he's beating up lions. Do you know he killed a lion with his bare hands? And he killed a bear with his bare hands? And he took on Goliath and slew Goliath, and he ran at Goliath and said, Who is this uncircumcised person talking about my God? And David was a man you did not want to mess with. But he said, The Lord is... He, he, it was a present reality for David. Is God a present uh, reality for you? Not like, well, hopefully, here's what I know. I know what I used to do. Well, Lord, after I do this, I'll get right with you later on. <laughs> In the future. A lot of people are like this. Yeah, I used to serve God. Well, I used to, you know, I used to, I once, but man, what about Psalm 23? The Lord is right now. The Lord is. I like that next word too. <laughs> my. My shepherd. It's personal. We're talking about a real relationship here. We're not talking about religion. We're not talking about religion. So many people today have a set of things that they think they have to do to somehow please God. And that if they will do A, B, C, and D, then God will like me. But David could say this, the Lord is my shepherd. He knew him. <laughs> Personal. A personal thing. He knew the Lord. And I was just talking with Brother Tim about before service, like we mentioned a couple weeks ago, Paul wrote and said, uh, I, for I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. The true essence of Christianity is not necessarily a bunch of regulations and rules. We could, and I'm, I mean, I'm not going to preach on that tonight. By the way, you have to have regulations and rules. Every church has them. You can't go to a church that, well, we're, we are, we have no rules around here. Really? Can I come naked to your services? <laughs> well, no, you can't do that. Oh, so somebody's got a bunch of rules. <laughs> we all have rules, it's just different Standard of rules. 
But rules are never going to get you right with God. Rules are never going to fix that heart and make it what it needs to be with the Lord. That only comes when we'll humble ourselves, see ourselves in the lost condition that we so rightfully are in, and we'll humble our heart and say, Oh God, I know you're not going to be impressed with me putting a tie on. I know you're not going to be impressed if I darken the, uh, the steps of a church somewhere. But God, I know that I need to get right with you. Mm. I need to get right with you. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's me, oh Lord. It's me. It's not the church's fault. It's not the lack of evidence fault. It's not the Bible's fault. It's not the preacher's fault. Person. David said, the Lord is my. Really speaking, your religion consists in your personal relationship to God in Jesus Christ. Not mere profession, but actual possession is what counts. Not profession, but possession. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, that in that day, in the judgment day, many, he said, many are going to come to me and say, Lord, did we not cast out devils? Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? Lord, and we did all of these wonderful works in thy name. Their problem was they were depending on their religion. We did all of this stuff. Aren't you pleased? And those sobering words from Christ, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. See, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He knew him. Paul said, I know whom I have built. He knew him. Hey, do you know him this evening? Do you know him? Well, preacher, I've been baptized. Well, whoop de doo Well, <laughs> I have been a member of a church for 15 years. That's great, but do you know him? I, I, I just remember just when I may have shared it, but I was at Belk in the States and I asked the young man, I said, if you died tonight, do you know where you'd spend eternity? He said, I've been in church my whole life. And I said, that ain't what I ask. But that's how people are. If you died, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Well, I have tried to live a good life. Well, I have been in church my whole entire life. Yeah, but that's not the question, friend. The question is, do you know him? Because it's not profession, it's possession that counts. And then we come down to, verse, to the fifth word there, the Lord is my shepherd. Now that's tender right there. That's sweet. Shepherd. He's not set forth as a distant king or lord or as the impersonal rock or shield, but here he stands as the shepherd who takes care of all the needs of his sheep. He's the shepherd. He's the shepherd. And Bible study tonight, you want to see a little Bible study? All right. He's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. And he's the chief shepherd. He's the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. He justifies. The good shepherd justifies. The great shepherd uh, is the one who takes care of us and sanctifies us. And the chief shepherd is going to appear and he will glorify us. Amen and amen. Psalm 22 is the good shepherd. Psalm 23 is the great shepherd. Psalm 24 is the chief shepherd. Amen. It's called the three appearings of Christ. You want to see them this evening? All right. How about quickly? Quickly turn to um, John chapter 10. How about John chapter 10? Jesus Christ is the shepherd. Look at John chapter 10 and verse number 10. The thief cometh not, Jesus is speaking here, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Watch it now. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is in hireling and not the shepherd 
whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he's an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Other sheep I have, that's talking about us folks, which are not of this fold, we're not of the fold of Israel, amen. Jesus prophesying right here, other sheep I have, I, I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, hey, hey, that's the church, and one shepherd, and that's Christ. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Powerful words here, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. That's the good shepherd right there. How about Hebrews chapter 13, and look at verse number 20. Hebrews 13, 20. Hebrews chapter 13, and verse number 20. We see the great shepherd. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Here we find him as the great shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the great shepherd in, in our lives tonight. He's the God who's taking care of us, who's praying for us, who's ministering to our needs. He is the great shepherd, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. All right, so we've seen the good shepherd. We've seen the great shepherd. Now turn to 1 Peter chapter 5 and we'll see the chief shepherd. 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, and look at verse number 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So right there, he's the chief shepherd. So he's the good shepherd, he's the great shepherd, and he's the chief shepherd. These are the three appearings of Christ, and we won't get into it, but Hebrews 9.26 says he hath appeared. Hebrews 9.24 says, now to appear. And Hebrews 9.28 says, shall appear. This is the idea of our God who is a prophet, who is a priest, and who will be the king one day. Who has justified us, who is sanctifying us, and who one day will glorify us. Who is the good shepherd, he's the great shepherd, and he is the chief shepherd. Amen, who came and laid down his life as the good shepherd. Psalm 22, if you study it, it's all about the crucifixion of Christ. It's all about that good shepherd laying down his life. He says, but hundreds of years before there's ever such thing as crucifixion, we find the psalmist writing about, they pierced my hands and my feet. They look upon me and stare. This is all before crucifixion, but it's written. He's the, he's the good shepherd. Psalm 23 is the great shepherd. Psalm 24, if you study it, you find out this shepherd's coming back. Who The earth is the Lord's <laughs> and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory, Selah. So he's the shepherd. This is, this is the very practical side to this psalm this evening. I, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's, he's the shepherd. He is the shepherd this evening. Um, because he's the shepherd, we'll never want for nourishment. Because he's the shepherd, we'll never want for refreshment, verse number 2. We'll never want for rest, verse number 3. We'll never want for protection, verse number 4. We'll never want for guidance, in verse number 5. We'll never want for a home, in verse number 6. The Lord my shepherd is, I shall be well supplied since he is mine and I am his, what can I want beside? In the great shepherd lies strength for my weakness, hope for my despair, food 
for my hunger, satisfaction for my need, wisdom for my ignorance, healing for my wounds, power for my temptation. Basically, the complement of all my lack. <laughs> That's the Lord. He's my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, I read that two ways. I shall not want. I read that this way. I'm not going to be coveting all the time. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't need anything. I realize I got it all in him. Because he's my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not go around wanting for everything because he's my shepherd. <laughs> I mean, he's the one. But then I also read it like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want because he's my shepherd. <laughs> he's going to take care of every need that I have. I shall not want for anything. I, there's not going to be a need in my life that goes unfulfilled because why? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hmm. Back to that little boy. Remember, he said, Laddie, remember, the Lord is my shepherd. They, they left him that day, came back a couple days later, knocked on the door, and the mother answered in very sorrowful countenance, and they knew the little boy had passed away. And so she took him to the little room where his lifeless body lay, and had a white shroud over him, and they, um, the minister took it down, you know, head to chin, chin uh, to shoulders, shoulders down to his waist, and he was, his body was laid like this. He had his hand on his ring finger. Mom said that he died saying, the Lord is my shepherd. He was, he, he was like this, holding that my. <laughs> That's good. That's good, folks. He's my shepherd. I ask you tonight, is he your shepherd? Is he your shepherd? Is he your shepherd tonight? It will not profit you much, my friend, to be able to say the Lord is a shepherd. That will be of no profit, no help. If you can say tonight, well, the Lord, he's a shepherd. You must be more personal. You must say, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this beautiful portion of Scripture. What a treat <laughs> and a help, truth, encouragement, strengthening from your word. Lord, we thank you for it and thank you that you are our shepherd. For those of us who do know you, Lord, you're not a shepherd, you are my shepherd. Lord, if somebody's here tonight and they don't know you, they can't personally say that you are their shepherd, I pray that they would trust you tonight. Lord, for those that are going through tough times or... Uh, uncertain things lie ahead or whatever, Lord, I pray that we might find comfort in those five words, the Lord is my shepherd. And then we might also say, I shall not want. Don't need anything because you're everything. You'll take care of us. Please bless now the invitation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, as Miss Misako plays softly on the piano, if God spoke to your heart this evening, we invite you to come. Maybe you just want to come and Thank God for being your shepherd. What a treasure we have. And then I have to ask, is he your shepherd? Or is he a shepherd? It must be personal. It can be if we'll humble our heart, admit that we're a sinner, admit there's a price for sin and that's death, hell, eventually the lake of fire, separated from God because of our sin. But there's good news. This shepherd we talked about loves you. He said, I give my life. I lay down my life for the sheep. 
And he said, I, I do this of my own will. You can't, nobody can take my life from me. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. He willingly satisfied the penalty for our sins. The only thing that's left to do is to humble your heart and receive Him as your Savior by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves, it's the, not of works, uh, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Whatever the need this evening, let's just take time and quiet our hearts before the Lord.